Alle kokwe. Wat is dat? Wat kun je ze langs doen? Alle we nakken niet dat zie vol. My name is Talon. I'm going to be talking a little bit about um, traditional archery as I know it, and not you know the modern traditional archery that we think of. The archery that I grew up with was a little bit different, and so from a very young age, when my grandma gave me my first bow, this is what I remember. And so when I you know go to shoot, I shoot I shoot quite a bit. My job actually allows me to uh, to be able to experiment with different forms of archery and most of my research throughout my life has been devoted to archery and its techniques across the world but specifically in um, you know in my own culture and so you know that's kind of what I what I would consider I specialize myself in and so um, what I'm going to do today is just basically shoot a couple arrows and talk about how I shoot um, you know I have uh, you notice I just pulled a handful of arrows out of my quiver here, which hangs right at the small of my back. Um, and I have, these are all ash arrowwood uh, shafts. And so, brass trade points, sinew wrap, turkey tail fletch, on this, on this one. And then these guys are um, mostly turkey wing three fletch. So, but they're all ash wood. They're all carved with, um, with pinch grips. And you see that, that kind of bump raised knock there that's carved into the arrow shaft um, when it's made and that's meant for the style of shooting that I do so when I shoot a bow I am using a pinch grip this is a 45 pound black locust bow and I can shoot this with a pinch grip no problem I've shot heavier bows with pinch grip so this right here is kind of my this is a 62 inch bow um, and I'm going to be shooting at a little little 14 inch target that you can't see uh, which sits behind me here but basically what I'm going to talk about is how I shoot um, why I shoot this way and then of course what you know benefit I get from shooting this way um, you know, culturally and just mechanically so you know like I said these arrows are kind of heavy they're not necessarily spined perfectly to this bow they're a little bit weak which is good for this style of shooting, you want weak spined arrows, just just under what your bow is. And so, uh, you know, this being a 45 pound bow, these arrows are spined to about, you know, 36, 36 pounds, or somewhere in that neighborhood, you know, De just depending on the arrow shaft as well. Um, you can get them close, but you really can't ever get them totally perfect. And so, uh, you just kind of have to know your arrows. So this right here, I'm going to be shooting this one first off. This is the brass trade point, turkey tail fletch, and you wrap. So uh, I'm just going to fire all the arrows in my hand, and then I'm going to talk about why I use this style of grip. So here we go. Go ahead and shooting at this target here. There's all my arrows, so I've got some more here in my quiver. Um, there's another three fletch ashwood car pinch knot, and uh, I mean some of these are, are better than others. But really, what I'm doing when I'm shooting is every time I pull an arrow out of my hand, out of my out of my bow hand here. So when it starts here, it comes up. I grab it by the knock. That knock helps me to index where um, you know where the up and down is on that arrow. I pull it out just to the tip. I pull it out just where I can feel that tip and then I hit, I touch the string with my arrow. So touch the string and then actually fold it inward. So you notice there's a little bit of a process to when I'm doing this. And that's basically, I repeat that every time I shoot an arrow. So it becomes very natural and very circular and very uh, fluid after a little while. Those ones were a little bit rough. Um, because those are, well that was me. And so, 
you know, with these guys right here, it's, uh, you know, if you're holding a bunch of arrows in your hand at one time, that's why we have quivers. You know, you can pull five or six out at a time and use those rather than trying to hold 10 or 12 arrows in your hand, which is just not feasible. And so, you know, it can be done, it's just unwieldy. Um, like I said, this is a 45 pound black locust bow. And this right here is another bow that I'm working on at the moment. This is a 60 pound um, black locust bow. It's got slightly recurved tips because the stave that I had had a heck of a recurve. Anybody that's worked with black locust knows that when it dries, that um, those growth rings tend to shrink and that will draw the bow into a natural reflex. And so I actually just left them that way because, you know, that's the way that the wood wanted to work. And so that's the way I worked it. But even with a 60 pound bow, I'm still, I'm still using a pinch grip just fine. You know, there's no issue with me using this pinch grip on this bow. So it is really just a matter of of getting that release down. Now, there are some folks, you know, that even draw to the degree of of drawing to their ear or farther, you know. And so that's also very, very common to see as well. So to, to, to shoot like that, you would see something like this. And so depending on how you're shooting and why you're shooting, whether it's for warfare or for hunting, you know, you're going to be using different kinds of arrows and also to a different, you know, different shooting style. Now, it's always going to be that, that pinch grip, that release is very, very common, but your tips, your fletchings, the type of bow you're using, your equipment, that's what changes. Um, you know, so when you're hunting, when you're going out and you're hunting, 45 pounds is, is perfectly fine. You know, and you're going to have a couple arrows here in your hand. You don't need a dozen arrows to go hunting. You only need a, a couple, you know, and so you're going to be going out and you're going to be looking for whatever it is that you're hunting for. And you're probably going to get that in, you know, the first shot, hopefully. And so if you say your prayer's right, you're going to go out there and you're going to hunt for whatever it is that you're looking for. This is a Canada Goose fletched arrow. And this is a turkey tail fletched arrow. You notice that this is only two feathers and they're tied on rather than glued on. This is a little bit older style of fletching. You see these um, being used you know, with uh, the Great Lakes tribes and the Southeast tribes and just about everywhere else. Um, you know, I mean, some method of a folded two fletch is everywhere. And it usually tends to predate a three fletch. Um, that has to do sometimes with technology that came before, um, you know, bows, which was the outlatl, uh, which in the 18th century, if you're looking at like bows in like the Indian trade and things like that, our atlatls are basically considered ancient weapons by that point already. And so you really don't have a whole lot of, um, you know, things like that being used. And so a lot of the arrows and things that you see are either a variation of two fletch or three fletch. And so you know, they're using an, an arrow that's meant for whatever reason. I think I just split one. Um, <laughs> that's why I make so many arrows because I keep splitting them. But this is a river cane arrow that I've straightened. So notice there's the uh, there's the arrow shaft. Spin it. You can get these pretty darn straight, um, you know, just by heat straightening them. And uh, after a couple times of doing that, you know, they should take a, a pretty good set. They're always going to want to go back to their natural state, but you just keep working them. So these arrows, you know, these are these are almost like living things. You know, they they kind of live and die just like anything else does so when this was this arrow breaks you know it's it's gonna um, you know it's gonna go somewhere all you bury it or whatever I do discard it burn it but uh, you know these things these things are very very useful tools and so I'm gonna make sure that I take care of these you know these you know these might one day be something that I rely on for my food or have relied on for my food for that matter and so uh, you know these are very important tools to me and my culture and so I just kind of wanted to share a little bit about how we use them you know and why we use them for warfare for hunting um, 
And so you know, there's lots of different things. If you have any questions, comment uh, down below or maybe even suggest something that you would like to see in another video. I don't know how, how, many, how many videos I'm going to make, but uh, that's just something I thought I'd give a little bit of a, a talk about. And if you guys want to want to know more, want to see more, then I'll be happy to do that. So, nyawe, salonoki, kinerle.